How did your first show ever go? Were you nervous or were there any hiccups? Will you one day give guitar classes for people who want to learn from a huge talent like yours? If someone with no musical experience wanted to try and learn bass, where do you think is the best place to start? How did your first show ever go? Were you nervous or were there any hiccups? And how old were you? So I started playing guitar when I was 13 and right away I made a band with my best friends from school at the time. My friend Brett was on drums, my friend Rolando was on bass and my other friend Mitchell was also on guitar. And so I remember I was like, all right, let's learn some songs. We got together, we learned Smells Like Teen Spirit. And of course, you know, we were too young to really play anywhere at that time. But I was like, I really want to play in a bar, you know, that'd be so cool. So I remember uh, we called every single bar in town and we explained to them the situation. We're like, all right, we're underage. Can we just come in and play and then leave right after, you know? We won't, we won't stay in the bar or anything. And there was one pub, Whiskey Jack's pub, in West Kelowna and they were like yeah you guys can do it it's cool just come in with your parents and then you can leave right after and we're like okay great so I remember we learned some tunes uh, we all got into uh, my friend's dad's truck the drummer's dad's truck and we drove in together and we we're all so excited we were just like so pumped it's gonna be our first show you know and we got up on stage and you know we just plugged into whatever amps they had there i remember it was a vox ac30 that i plugged into and yeah you know we just we played the songs and it was great it was like such a magical feeling and you know thinking back we probably didn't sound that good we'd only been playing our instruments for like maybe a year at that time we probably didn't sound that good but it was so magical and so fun and i wasn't nervous at all in fact i felt more comfortable than i ever had at any other point in my life you know like I get more nervous having a conversation with somebody than I do up on stage playing for thousands of people right but yeah this particular show was just such a blast you know our parents came out and I remember it was at that point that I was like all right I love this and I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life and I'm gonna turn this into a career oh yeah one more thing there's also a really funny photo that my mom took from that show and I'm like raising my arm in the air and my arm just <laughs> looks so skinny and so long. And that was one of the things that uh, me and the other guys in the band joked about for years to come after was uh, that picture from that show. But yeah, it was a good time. Have you ever been to Australia or want to at any given time in your life? So I've never been to Australia, but we actually do have a tour booked there in May. So three months from now, we're gonna be playing in Australia. It's on the books. I'm really excited for that. Yeah, I've never been, but you know, I've always wanted to go and see some koala bears and all that stuff. Eat some Vegemite, check out, check out the beaches and all the rattlesnakes and everything. And yeah, it's gonna be a good, good time. I'm really excited to come and play in Australia. You know, playing a show anywhere is fun, but it's always exciting going to a new part of the world that you've never been, right? It's like. I don't know, when we're playing a show in like Iowa or something, I've been there a million times, there's nothing that cool about it when you, once you've been more than once. Nothing against anyone who lives in Iowa, but it's way more exciting when you're on tour in like, you know, Paris or somewhere like that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to play any, any show, but it's nice when you can kind of tie it into a, a cool destination. Do you keep your string gauges consistent across every guitar? or do you mix and match depending on the song, style, and guitar itself? So yeah, I've been playing 10 to 46 on all my guitars for years, you know, since I was a teenager. Um, I did try 11s at one point because, I, I don't even know if this made any sense, but I had the idea that I wanted to build up my finger strength quicker when I first started out, so I put really heavy strings on. I put 11s on, uh, just, I, I, in my mind, it was like, it's like training with weighted clothing. Like, I'll just build up the strength quicker, but I don't know, it seems kind of dumb now that I think back to it. So yeah, the 11s are pretty aggressive. I did that for a few months and then it was a bit too heavy. So I switched to 10s and I've been using 10s ever since. Although I've kind of been sort of flirting with the idea of maybe uh, switching to nines, you know? As I get older, my hand kind of has been cramping up a bit more lately it's not like an issue like I can still play but I feel like why fight it you know 
why not make it easier on yourself? So I might be switching to nines on my guitars at some point soon. It's kind of a thought I've been having. Hey everybody, hope you've been enjoying the video so far. Hope you've been enjoying the questions. Uh, before we get to some more of them, I just wanna quickly talk about the sponsor of today's video. So this video is brought to you by Exter. Now, Exter makes some really fashionable leather goods. I've just picked up their Parliament wallet here, which I'm loving. This is the steel blue option. Super fashionable, and it's also got a lot of really cool features packed into it as well, which we're gonna talk about here. So for me as a touring musician, when I'm on tour or when I'm just you know playing around town, it's really important for me to keep my belongings safe, particularly my credit cards, my IDs, stuff like that. One of the many features it has is that it includes a built-in RFID blocking technology, which protects you from electronic pickpocketers. So that's pretty cool. And you also have the option of adding in a tracker card here, which protects against loss. Basically how this works is you link the card to an app in your phone. If you ever lose your wallet, you can go into the app, hit a button and the card will start beeping so you can find your wallet that way. You can also see where you last had it on a virtual map. And it works the other way too. Like let's say you lose your phone, you can actually hit a button in the card here and it'll link to your phone and your phone will start beeping. So you can find your phone that way. Plus it has this super cool uh, mechanism for the cards to come out, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, anyways, I thought you guys could benefit from the increased security this offers uh, same way I have been. And uh, yeah, you know, if you're interested in checking out Exter, use the link in the description below. Uh, if you use that link for a purchase, I'll earn a small commission on each purchase, which helps to fund the channel here, helps me to create more regular videos. So yeah, one more time, check out Exter, link in the description below. Let's get back to some more questions. Do you ever play bass the way it is not played on songs while on tour? So if we're talking about playing bass or playing parts from a record different live from on the album, um, yeah, that does happen a lot, you know, for the most part I try to keep it consistent to the record uh, But there are times where I stray away a bit, you know The way it works in Blackfield Brides is we're lucky enough to get stems from the albums Where you get, you know, each isolated track from the record So you can really zone in on the parts, you know, instead of trying to like listen in in the whole mix and pick out a certain part to learn It's just like, no, here's the isolated track Play this, right? So it's really Having that really helps when it comes to like learning something exactly the way it was recorded. Because you know, even if you were there in the studio too, in some cases, it's like going back and trying to remember what you played can be difficult at times. So having the isolated track really helps. And yeah, for the most part, I keep it as close as I can. The only time I might intentionally, you know, change a part a lot going into it knowingly is if like, is if there's a really complicated guitar part and they want me to sing a background part at the same time as it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty good at singing and playing at the same time, having that separation between hands and mouth. But there comes a point, if the part is so complex, sometimes it's literally just impossible as a human to do both. In that case, I'll simplify the line a bit, uh, instrumentally, so that I can do the background vocal part. Um, which, you know, I, ideally you don't do that, you know, I, I try to avoid that if I can, but sometimes you just gotta. Will you one day give guitar classes for people who want to learn from a huge talent like yours? Oh, you're too kind. That is so nice of you to say. Um, so yeah, you know, I've done a lot of teaching in the past. Um, I've taught at music schools and things like that. Uh, currently I do teach private lessons. I have five students that I teach every week, but that's you know, I enjoy doing it, but that's about all I can handle right now with the, my uh, with my time schedule. You know, I'm, I I'd love to take on more students and you know pass on my knowledge, as they say. We'll see, but yeah, right right now my focus is kind of on YouTube and on touring and stuff like that. So I don't do too much teaching uh, at this point uh, in time. If someone with no musical experience wanted to try and learn bass, where do you think is the best place to start? So you got to remember that. Anytime somebody's starting out, they don't have musical experience, right? You know, like me, if I learn a new instrument now because I have experience, it might be a bit easier for me, but I started at the same place that everybody else starts, you know? Um, and even if you come from a musical family or something, you still have no musical experience yourself, right? That's the one thing you gotta remember. We all start at the same place, and that can be applied to anything, not just music. So. That being said, you know, if, if you're just starting out, what I recommend is just to learn riffs. You know, don't worry about learning scales or anything like that at the beginning. Uh, 
you know, just learn a few riffs from bands you like. Or learn some simple riffs, right? Seven Nation Army is a great one. Come As You Are by Nirvana. You know, stuff like that. S simple riffs that aren't too quick. Um, that's what I would say because start with that if you enjoy that then carry it forward and learn more theory and you know more difficult things but if you learn riffs and you enjoy that and you have fun with it that's how you know if you get frustrated with that and you don't really enjoy it then maybe it's not the right thing for you but yeah that's what I'd recommend you know just learn some riffs that's what I did go on tab websites uh, learn how to read tab first I guess you can do that on off of YouTube and then go to ultimateguitar.com, learn some riffs, you know, that's what I'd recommend. Uh, the internet is such a great place, and if you really do want to learn, there's so many resources, and there's really no excuse at this day and age. So, yeah, hope that helps.